Hi friends, welcome to our lesson. I'm Mrs. Gradney, and today we'll be multiplying multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000 by single digit numbers. Here's what you'll need for our lesson. Let's get started. Let's read this expression together. Two ones times four. Now pause the video and on your place value chart, draw disks to show two ones times four, or four groups of two ones, and circle each group of two ones. So two ones times four is what? It's eight ones. Okay, let's erase. And now on your place value chart, I'd like you to pause the video and show two tens times four and circle each group of two tens. So two tens times four is what? Eight tens. Okay, let's erase. And now on your place value chart, I'd like you to pause the video and show two hundreds times four. And circle each group of two hundreds. So two hundreds times four equals what? Eight hundreds. Now, let's think a little bit about what we just did. What do you notice about multiplying two hundreds times four as compared to multiplying two tens times four or two ones times four? Pause the video to talk out loud about what you notice. You may have noticed that there are the same number of place value disks each time we multiplied. There were four groups of two units but the value of the place value disks were different, and so the products were different. Hmm. So what do you think would happen then if we multiplied two thousands times four? Pause the video to explain your prediction. I have a friend over here who said he thinks it would look the same again. We would again have four groups of two units. But this time, the value of the place value disks would be thousands, and so the product would be eight thousands. Is that what you predicted? Great thinking. Let's try another problem. Eight times two, or in unit form we could say, eight times two ones. Pause the video and use disks to represent eight times two ones on your place value chart and circle each group of two ones. So eight times two ones equals what? And remember to say the answer in unit form. Eight times two ones equals 16 ones, which in standard form is 16. Now, here are three more expressions and in a moment, I'll ask you to pause the video to do some work. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to use disks to represent each of these expressions on your place value chart, and then solve each expression in unit form and write the product in standard form, just like we did here. And then when you get back, we'll compare. Welcome back. Be sure to compare your work to mine and make any changes if you need to. Now, I want you to think, what patterns did you notice as you solved these multiplication problems in unit form? Pause the video to talk about the patterns that you noticed. You may have noticed that all of the problems had eight as a factor. Or maybe you noticed when you looked at the disks that each time we drew eight groups of two disks. Each time we multiply, we had eight times two of some unit, and whatever unit we were multiplying by, that was the unit we ended up with in the product. So when we multiplied eight times two ones, 
In the product, we got 16 ones. When we multiplied eight times two tens, in the product, again, we got that unit of tens. When we multiplied eight times two hundreds, we got 16 hundreds. And when we multiplied eight times two thousands, we got 16 thousands. You may have also noticed a pattern in the zeros. When we multiplied by tens, there was one zero in the product, just like one zero in the tens. When we multiplied by hundreds, there were two zeros in the product, just like there were two zeros in the hundreds. And when we multiplied by thousands, there were three zeros in the product, just like there were three zeros in the thousands. Great noticing. Now, let's look a little bit more closely at eight times two hundreds. What do you predict would happen if we change the unit from eight times two hundreds to eight hundreds times two? Pause the video to think about this, make a prediction, and then test your prediction. When you get back, we'll discuss it. Welcome back. Did you predict that the products would be the same? Why are the products the same? In the last lesson, we learned that eight times 200 can be decomposed into eight times two times 100 because 200 can be decomposed into two times 100 and 800 times two can be rewritten or renamed as eight times 100 times two because 800 can also be decomposed into eight times 100. And now we can see that when the factors are decomposed like this, they have the same factors, eight, 100, two, eight, 100, two. And because we can multiply in any order, this shows that both statements are equivalent. Let's try some more problems. Read these expressions with me. Four times three, four times 30, four times 300, four times 3,000. Now pause the video and solve each of these expressions in unit form and write the products in standard form. If it's helpful, you can feel free to drop disks on the place value chart if it will help you. Then come back and we'll compare. Welcome back. Check your work with mine. Now, what patterns did you notice as you solved these multiplication problems in unit form? Pause the video to talk about what patterns you noticed. You may have noticed that with each multiplication, we had four times three of some unit. And whatever unit it was that we were multiplying by is the unit that we see in the product. So four times three ones is 12 ones. Four times three tens is 12 tens. Four times three hundreds is 12 hundreds. And four times three thousands is 12 thousands. That's the same as what we noticed last time. You may have also noticed that pattern of zeros that we noticed last time as well. When we multiplied by tens, there was one zero in the product, just like there was one zero in the tens. When we multiplied by hundreds, there were two zeros in the product, just like there were two zeros in the hundreds. And when we multiplied by thousands, there were three zeros in the product, just like there were three zeros in the thousands. Great noticing. I wonder if that pattern always works. Hmm. Let's try some more problems. Read these expressions with me. Five times two, five times 20, five times 200, five times 2,000. Now pause the video and solve these expressions in unit form and write the products in standard form. If it's helpful, you can draw the place value disks on a place value chart. Then come back and we'll compare. Welcome back. Check your work with mine. Now let's talk about patterns again. Earlier in the lesson, we noticed a pattern of zeros, where when we were multiplying by tens, 
there was one zero in the product, just like there was one zero in the tens factor. When we multiplied by hundreds, there were two zeros in the product, just like there were two zeros in the hundreds factor. And when we multiplied by thousands, there were three zeros in the product, just like there were three zeros in the thousands factor. Does that pattern hold true for these examples? Pause the video to reflect on this and explain what you're thinking. That pattern of zeros does not hold true for these examples. There are a couple of ways we can reason through this. One way we can think about it is that, let's look closer at five times 2,000. With five times 2,000, five times two is the basic fact, which is 10. And then we have to think about the unit, 10 what? Well, it's 10 thousands. Since the product of the basic fact already has a zero in it, that adds an extra zero to the product. Another way we can think about it is by thinking about decomposing the factors. Five times 2,000 can be rewritten as five times two times 1,000. We can multiply five times two because remember we can multiply in whatever order makes it easier for us. Five times two is 10 and then 10 times 1,000 equals 10,000. Again, four zeros in the product because the basic fact product already has a zero in it. Let's apply what we're learning now to solve a word problem. We'll use the RDW process to help us and we'll start by reading the problem together. Ready? Read. Francisco played a video game and earned 60 points for every coin he collected. He collected seven coins. How many points did he earn for the coins he collected? Now, pause the video and draw a tape diagram to represent the story. Then when you're done, come back and compare your drawing with mine. Here's my tape diagram. Does yours look similar? Because I knew that Francisco earned 60 points for every coin he collected, and he collected seven coins, I drew seven units of 60, and I labeled the total as the unknown. Now let the tape diagram speak to you. What does it tell you about how we can solve? In the tape diagram, I can see seven equal groups, and I know the value of each group is 60. And we're looking for the total. That tells me that I can multiply seven times 60, or seven groups of 60, to get the total. So pause the video here and solve the problem using whatever strategy you'd like, and make sure to write an answer statement to answer the question. Then come back and we'll compare our solution pathways. Welcome back. Did you find that Francisco earned 420 points for the coins he collected? On the screen, you can see two different ways that you may have thought about the problem. Does one of them match how you thought about it? In solution pathway A, we decompose the factor of 60 into 6 times 10. And then we multiplied 7 times 6, which is 42, and 42 times 10 equals 420. In solution pathway B, 60 was renamed as 6 tens, so solved in unit form. 7 times 6 tens equals 42 tens. And 42 tens, written in standard form, is 420. Great job today, friends. I think we're ready for the problem set. On the screen are the must-do problems for the problem set. Set a timer or watch the clock for 10 minutes to work on these problems. Of course, if you have extra time, feel free to try any of the other problems on the problem set as well. Today, we multiplied multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000 by single digit numbers, and we found some patterns. Remember to check in with your teacher, and I'll see you next time for another Eureka Math lesson. Bye!